Hi, I'm Mike Marin, and in this video, we'll continue where we left off in the previous video. Recall, we had imported the lung cap data into R. We discussed the use of the head and tail commands, as well as the square brackets for looking at subsets of the data. We also introduced the names command. We can check the variable names using the names command in R. Here we would like the names of the variables for lung cap data. Now, while we will learn our commands for summarizing data later in this series of videos, we'll introduce the mean function for now for the sake of discussing what will follow. Suppose that we would like to calculate the mean age in our sample. Here we can try and ask R for the mean of the variable age. We'll see that we returned an error and R is telling us this object age is not found. This is because R does not recognize a variable called age, as age is stored in the object lung cap data. There are two options here. The first is that we can use the dollar sign to extract the variable. Let's go ahead and demonstrate this. Here, again, we can ask R to calculate the mean, and what we need to do is go into this object lung cap data, and using the dollar sign, we can extract this variable age. Just to reiterate that, here we are asking R to go into this object lung cap data. The dollar sign specifies we would like to extract the variable age from this object, and then we'll calculate the mean for the variable age. You'll notice that doing this still does not put the variable age into R's memory. If we try and calculate the mean for age, it's still going to let us know this object age is not found. Or if we just ask, give us the age for everyone in our data set, this object is not found. If we would like to look at the age, we need to let R know where age can be found. Look in this object lung cap data and pull out of that object the variable age. So the first option we have is using the dollar sign to extract variables. Doing this means every time we'd like to look at a variable, we need to use the dollar sign to extract it from the object lung cap data. The second option that we have is to attach the data. The pro of attaching data is that we're able to call on variables by their name and we don't need to use the dollar sign to extract them. The con is that they're put into R's workspace memory and they can be overwritten more easily as well as they'll hang around in R's memory until we erase them from R's memory. Let's go ahead and look at attaching the data. Here we can use the command attach and we'd like to attach the lung cap data into R's memory. Now, if we try and calculate the mean age, all we need to do is let R know we would like to calculate the mean for the variable age. Now R recognizes that there is a variable called age. Again, just to demonstrate that, if we ask R for the variable age, it will now know that there is this variable age in its memory, and it will show all those to us upon request. If we would like to unattach the data, we can use the detach command detach the lung cap data. We can see having done this, if we ask for age, R no longer remembers this variable age. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach the data in R, and we're going to work with the data attached. It's worth mentioning here that personally, I prefer working with the data attached, as it means I don't need to use dollar signs to extract variables all the time. Others will tell you that it is better to work with the data not attached. Really, this is more of a personal preference and really a matter of whether you prefer potatoes or potatoes. We can check the type of variable or the class of variable using the class command in R. The way that R treats a variable and produces summaries for that variable will depend on the type of variable that R thinks it is. That is, a numeric variable or a categorical variable. Let's go ahead and first recall the names of the variables in this object lung cap data. We can now use the class command to ask R what type of variable each is. We can see the variable lung cap is numeric. The variable age is integer. The variable height is numeric. The variable smoke is a factor or categorical. The variable gender is a factor, and finally the variable caesarean 
is a factor. For factors, we can use the levels command to ask our what the different levels or categories are for this factor or categorical variable. Here we can see if we ask for the levels of the variable smoke, it lets us know they are yes and no. If we ask for the levels of this variable gender, it lets us know they are female and male. We'll introduce the summary command in later videos, but for now, let's ask R for a generic summary of the data. We can do this using the summary command for the lung cap data. We'll see that R provides summaries it believes are appropriate for each of the variables. We can see lung cap, age, and height, all of which were numeric, are summarized using means, medians, quartiles, and so on. We can see the variables smoke, gender, and cesarean, which were factors or categorical, are summarized using frequencies. That is, the number of smokers and non-smokers, or the number of females and males. R was able to recognize smoke, gender, and cesarean as factors as the data was entered using characters or words. Often in a data set, categorical variables may be coded using numbers. For example, using zero to represent a non-smoker and one to represent a smoker, or zero to represent a male, one to represent a female. For the sake of looking at these, let's go ahead and create a zero one variable and save it in an object X. For the sake of demonstration, let's pretend this is a variable coding whether or not someone smokes. Zero for no, one for yes. We can see when we ask R what type of variable is X, it tells us it's numeric. And that's because R sees the zero and ones as numbers, not as indicators for categories. If we ask for a summary of this variable, it's gonna report summaries appropriate for numeric variables. We can convert x to a categorical variable or a factor using the as.factor command in R. Here we can let R know we would like x to be recorded as a factor, and in the parentheses we throw an x. Again, this is letting R know store in this object x, the object x recorded as a factor. We can now see when we ask R for the class of this variable x, it knows it's a factor. When we ask for a summary of this variable, it reports frequencies. There were seven in category zero, three in category one. In the next video in this series, we'll discuss more about subsetting data using the square brackets, as well as introduce the idea of logic statements and a few other random handy commands. Thanks for watching this video and make sure to check out my other instructional videos.